Hello everyone, welcome back to Mixbus TV. David here, hope you're having a great day. In this video, we are gonna see how to mix massive modern rock drums, combining real drums and samples. Let's get to it. A couple of months ago, I mixed a very, very cool project, a drum cover album for badass drummer Hallie Muntin. She released the first video not long ago, you can see it here, and we'll link it down below and we reposted it and many of you asked me if I could break down the mix that I did for her drum. And since we are talking about drums, I just finished filming and recording a brand new course soon available on Promix Academy exclusively on how to record rock acoustic drums using two, three and eight mic configurations where eight mic is gonna be our limit, how to get a great drum recording using only stock preamps from your interface is all gonna be about mic choices, mic placement. So look out for it. It's gonna be available shortly after you're watching this video on promixacademy.com. Let's get to the video. These were drum covers. So the drums were going to be the main instrument playing on the playback, on the bad tracks, on the instrumental tracks for her videos. For her sound, I wanted that massive powerhouse, roomy uh, rock kit, but with some industrial influences, even based on the other covers that she did. So I wanted to keep the project consistent. So let me play you the final result really quick, and then we'll break down the mix. Okay, so you here we have this big roomy massive sounding drum kit obviously enhanced with samples but that's exactly the style we wanted that industrial influence to it so the original recording weren't too many tracks but they were well recorded i kept some and i replaced completely others let me play you what i had originally this is the kick drum not bad although for this song i replaced completely this kick drum and we will see that later i was given top and bottom snare which i kept these sound like this then i was given toms which i replaced completely Let's go to where they actually play so you can hear them. So we have a rack tom, floor tom, and floor tom 2. They sound like this. Again, not bad, but I opted for replacing these completely. And then I was given overheads. They sound like this. So just to try to play the original kit with no processing on it, what I can see, it sounded like this. Okay, so from here I started to replace and augment the kit with samples. Let's start with the kick. The kick was pretty simple. For Heli, I picked this drum kick here from Superior Drummer 3. It's the tight punch kick from the Rock Expansion. This is how it sounds by itself with no processing. So I imported the original drum kick here in the Superior Drummer 3 tracker, and I printed out this kick drum here that I used 
in the song without any processing on it sounds like this I did then the same thing with toms. I imported the tom tracks into Tracker and then turned them into MIDI. As you can see here, these are all our tom hits. But for her toms, instead of Superior Drummer, once I turned them into MIDI, I used Perfect Drums. This is how they sound without no processing. They sound pretty amazing right off the bat. For other songs, I added another kick drum. Uh, from Perfect Drum added to the Superior Drummer kick and another snare to the Superior Drummer snare. So I then replaced completely the kick drum so I didn't use the original track and I didn't use the original tracks for the toms. But I kept the original snare both top and bottom and I augmented it with a sample again taken from Superior Drummer 3. In this case was the Big Crack snare from Metal Expansion. And it sounds like this. Again, I imported the original uh, snare track here into the tracker and printed my output from Superior Drummer 3. And that one sounds like this. Now the snare sample has an interesting treatment and we will see it. As you can see here, after printing the snare from Superior Drummer 3, I had to split it in two tracks for a specific reason. We will see that in a minute. Let me play you the snare without any processing on the snare samples alone. Okay, so you can hear there are ghost notes and that's the reason why I had to separate uh, the main hits, the stronger hits from the ghost notes. We will see that why the processing on the channel itself, it's the same. It's the parallel processing that changes. So we are left with a replaced kick drum from Superior Drummer 3, the original snare top and bottom, the snare sample I added from Superior Drummer, the snare ambience from Superior Drummer, which I printed on a different track, the toms I printed from Perfect Drums, and the original overhead stereo track. I have some processing here on the two bus, which is basically our drum bus, since it's the only instrument here. I want to show to you what I have here because I'm going to activate while we go through each individual track. I have an SSL with a little bit of top end and high mid, then my analyzer, and then Mac DSP analog channel, then Ozone Vintage EQ for just a little bit of low boost, high boost, and that's it. And Ozone Maximizer just to catch those occasional peaks. Uh, it's not doing more than 1, 2 dB of uh, gain reduction here. We will see the gain staging and gain reduction of these processing on the two bus at the end. So I'm going to activate these and let's start with the kick drum. Sounds like this without anything. My first is the SSL channel as usual. I have a little bit of gate, top and high mid again, and pretty much nothing else for this kick. The difference is this. Then I wanted a weight uh, EQ. In this case, I was torn between the API 550B and the VEQ4. Both are great EQs for drums, for kicks, for snare. I love them both. I kept them both here, although the API was bypassed, just to show you the differences and what was my thought process when I was uh, picking one or the other. Both are great. In fact, I used the 55B on another song for her with the same kick because it was fitting better. But this is the kick drum with just 40B at 50 Hertz uh, with the API 550B. via Q. API. If you listen closely, you will hear the differences in tone with these two EQ. Granted, they have slightly different settings. One is centered at 50, the other at 56. One is 3 dB, the other 4, but the differences here are more in tone than settings. So I settled for the VEQ4 
And as you can see, I'm sending my kick drum directly to the mix bus. The only processing that we have here is the SSL and the VEQ4. Then we go to the snare drum. So we have top and bottom set. Let's play them. As you can see, I don't have anything on the SSL channel, just gain staging, okay? And I think I will have to do another video on gain staging because people are still confused about it. And I understand why, because there's a lot of bad information still being put out about gain staging. So I'll probably do that. And um, a, a lot of questions about gain staging, why I can't use the faders, why I can't use the clip gain. So I will probably do another video on that. But yeah, I'm using these only for gain staging, no filtering, no compression, no anything. So this is the snare, how it was given to me. Let's go to the sample. So as you can see here, like I said before, I split the two tracks and I separated the hard hits from the ghost notes. Now the processing here on the inserts is exactly the same. So let's see that first. We have an SSL channel with filter, top, mid, and high mid, and a little bit of compression. Then one of my favorite plugins, Max Bass. Yes, for snare, because he adds a lot of body to it. Let's hear how it sounds with Max Bass on. Massive difference. It just give it the body like so much. After Max Bass, I have a VST which I'm using through Blue Cat Patchwork and is limiter number six. You know, I love this one. In this case, I'm using only the clipper module of limiter number six to shave off some of the tallest peak and make it a little more aggressive. I really love this on drums. So let's play it and see what it does. You can see one dB of clipping in the tallest peak and that's it. Okay, nothing too heavy. After that, still one of my favorite, lo-fi stock from Pro Tools. It adds grit, it adds aggression again. Love it. And then a very, very natural EQ from Waze, which I absolutely love for top and bottom the RS-56. This one adds, again, a little more top end. Okay. And this is the sample, the uh, Superior Drummer sample treatment on insert. Then we have the split track, the ghost notes that I had to cut and separate from the uh, main hits, which have the same exact treatment. So let me play this without and then with. Okay. So before going to the snare ambience and toms, let me tell you why I had to split these two tracks and remove the ghost notes from the main snare drum. As you can see, I'm sending my snare to the snare verb. So they have a dedicated reverb, both the main hits and the ghost notes. But then I have this snare parallel bus here. So basically I wanted to remove the ghost notes from the parallel bus because it was making them too hard for being ghost notes. From this parallel snare, I wanted more snap. I wanted more attack. And if I use the same processing on the ghost notes, they were coming out too strong. Not really ghosts anymore, but actual hits. So this parallel snare goes actually into two different buses with two different processing. The first one has a DBX 160 and Saturn after it for saturation. Let me solo this first parallel snare. Okay, 
so I really want that snap, super compressed uh, snare sound to add to the original snare, to the actually original sample. Together they sound like this. Without the first parallel. This first parallel bus uh, brings out that ring that I really, really like. Then the same sand also goes to a second snare parallel in which I have Davy Locke. Let me solo that one too. It's very similar, it's a little more distorted, just adds a different kind of texture to the snare. Less attack, more sustain, more distortion. Uh, this is how they sound all together. Without the parallel. Okay. So just so you get an idea of why I really had to separate ghost notes from the snare hits, let me add the parallel processing here to the ghost notes and you will hear how the ghost notes at this point become just too strong. Without. Okay. So, yeah, that's the reason I split the tracks and I separated the ghost from the main hits. And then we have this track here also printed from Superior Drummer 3, which is just the, the ambient that the sample come from. I printed on a different tracks because I want control of the snare ambient. So it sounds like this. I have some processing with the SSL. As you can see, my SSL is really my workhorse plugin. If I can, and many times I can, I can pr basically do 80% of my processing with this plugin alone. That's also why I have it on every channel, not just for gain staging, but because it's a great plugin. It's definitely, if I had to have only one, I guess it would probably be this one. But uh, I have some EQ here, filter and low mid. Let's bypass it. with now all the sample snares go directly to the mix bus to the drum bus but the snare up and down they go to this snare sum an aux bus in which i sum uh top and bottom you know for the usual reason you don't want to eq them individually you don't want to take for example here the famous infamous high pass it's not that i don't high pass I high pass correctly. Just saying. So I'm busting top and bottom snare to the snare sum, and I'm high passing them both, both mic as they were one. In this case, no phase issues. And then I'm adding my favorite for snare, you all guys know, API 2500 to add a little more snap to the uh, snare i showed this trick in many videos i keep my attack at either 10 or 30. this case is working very little because i already have a lot of snap from the sample but if i wanted to exaggerate this one Okay, the slow attack gives me more snap. That's the uh, reasoning behind these settings. In this case, this compressor is working mostly for the color and not for the action. But all the snares go to their snare verb. And we have here the Valhalla at 100%. That gives us a little bit of room and is EQ'd after it, just removing low mids and lows, which we don't need on the snare verb. Let's play all the snares together and see how they sound with the verb too.
the reverb is really low in volume. We didn't want an 80s kind of snare, but I wanted a little bit of tail, um, not compressed, not cut. And uh, let me turn the volume up so you can hear it. Okay, and I like that because I kept the original snare, there's a little bit of high-end uh, bleed into it and it goes into the reverb and, and that's exactly what I wanted because it glues the kit together, uh, together with the samples and the original tracks. So next we have toms. As we said, I replaced the toms with perfect drum. I don't know if I showed you what I used. Let me open it up and I will show you what samples I used for this and the other mix for Ehli. So the first one is this, DW Collector's Maple, same for the second tom, and then same again, the 1614 for the floor tom. So these are the samples that I used to replace the original toms. I imported the original tom tracks into Superior Drummer 3, turned them into MIDI, and then play the MIDI with uh, perfect drums, and these are the tom printed from perfect drums without any processing on it. Okay, so let's see the processing. We have SSL. In this case, I used the E channel, uncommon for me, just for compression, as you can see, and I have it, of course, in dual mono, so they react left and right because it's one stereo track. Didn't print it each tom individually, I printed a stereo track as you can see. So you can see it from the waveform. Left and right are very different one another. So I set the compressor in the SSLE to react individually to left and right. Even if they have the same settings, it doesn't matter. So if I play this one, for example, you will see how much you compress on the left channel. about barely 3 dB. And up to 6 dB on the right channel, because here is where we have the big toms, the floor toms. So um, one thing to pay attention, when you use um, dual mono plugins, like, like in this case, you can see here the symbol, um, it doesn't matter if they have the same settings. You basically have the two the two sides, left and right, reacting differently because the input is different, okay? The material coming in, the source material is different. So another, another example of how important is gain staging. In this case, I'm using the SSLE just for compression. Let's hear it with and without. Actually, I'm using a little bit of gating too to shorten the length of the tail, especially of the, the low toms. Let's hear it with and without. With. Okay, they sound a little less natural, but this is what we wanted in this case, and they sound a little more aggressive. We have the Pro EQ2. Adding quite some high end here at seven and five. You can see I EQ'd each channel individually, left and right again, then cut in 1.2 and my low pass at 24. This is pretty straightforward. Then I have one of my favorite sound toys, radiator, actually little radiator, uh, preamp emulation, one of the best sounding saturators ever. <laughs> Super simple. These are my settings. I think I've never changed them or rarely, if anything, but this is how it sounds. Uh, with the tom, it adds a little more grit, a little more density. With. Okay, again, saturators is all about gain staging. It depends how hard you hit them. They will give you all different results. Another very underrated plugin, uh, in my opinion, Ozone Vintage Limiter. I usually use this one either for the analog or tube color, but in this case, for some reason, I already had the saturator, the little radiator on them. I just wanted to use this to control the peak and to make the tom denser without really coloring. So let's see what it does. Very little limiting, okay? 
and as you can see again i used it in uh, left and right so do a mono so it reacts differently to the two channels let's see the right channel there you go you can see the massive difference in gain reduction between left and right and of course it's obvious if we look at the track we have the rack tom on the left and the um, floor tom on the right but given the same settings again it's barely doing anything here and it's compressing a couple of db on the right channel so this one even out the dynamic it makes them more dense and it helps us with headroom without take a look at the meter you see what a massive difference in level here i'm gonna measure it for you we hit minus 5.6 with the vintage limiter on We are basically 8 dB lower. We gain 8 dB of headroom, and the sounds doesn't really change that much. The modern is the more transparent of the three algorithm. Um, this is really, really nice, um, the, the action it has on percussive material. Uh, ozone vintage limiter. And then we have a free plugin, A1 stereo control. You've seen me using this one. It's just to open up the stereo image of the toms a little bit. And this is how it sounds. And as you can see, I use the safe base, so anything below 168 is kept untouched by the stereo widener. And these are the toms without any processing. And with the processing. But then if you take a look, the processing is not all here. I send these toms not to the mix bus, so not to the uh, drum bus, but to this aux bus. This routing is not necessary. I just did it because in other songs I have also used the original toms. So I bus them samples and original toms to this bus. And I had this processing in place, which I kept using in this case. So I have the SSL, let's bypass everything taking out somewhere 5 dB around 800 without this is the frequency that I'm taking out that cardboard D although these toms were sounding pretty amazing coming from um, perfect drum already I just uh, tweaked it a little bit and then max bass again another favorite on toms this plugin makes his way on toms, guitars, snares, and vocals, and kicks <laughs> pretty much everywhere. It's really amazing. Uh, max bass, old and still the benchmark. Without and with. And then limiter. L1, old school, just to take a few dB away on the very tall peaks on the attack on the transient. It barely moves, as you can see, not even 1 dB. Okay, just a safe net. And this tom also go to the snare verb, just to blend as we've seen all the elements and the kit together using different verbs and then send uh, different elements at different levels to them so they blend together. Then the last audio track we have is the overheads. Sounded pretty good. They're original recorded, of course, I kept them. This is how they sound with no processing on. I have very little on the SSL. You can see it already is again in dual mono and it has different EQ, especially here in the low mid. I have a little bit of low pass on both left and right, but here on the right, I'm taking away ADB around 500. This 
is what I'm removing. Same on the left channel, but just 2 dB instead of 8. Then we pretty much don't have anything else here on the SSL. But I have the Kramer tape, which I love again for overheads and symbols in general, uh, because it rounds off the high end very gently, very naturally. Absolutely no wow and flutter when you work with uh, multi tracks, multi multi mic drums, because of course they're gonna go out of timing, out of phase if you do. So I'm just using this for the color. This is so nice. Just listen to the hi-hats and cymbals, they are way more round with this one. Uh, one advice, don't use the distortion, like here. One advice with this one and cymbals, uh, don't use the distortion because it, it's nice, very nice on transient material like kick and snares and toms, not on cymbal because it will add harshness like any other pretty much saturator. Um, so just work with the gain staging again. Um, if I wanted to make these uh, overheads more darker than this, I would use the 7.5 speed, of course. Big difference. The 7.5 is, of course, darker. So that's one thing that you can try, but even the 15 is darker than the original. Love it, Kramer Master Tape, again, one of my favorite, and it's an amazing delay too. So after that is the L1 limiter. I'm, I'm using this pretty often on overhead when, like in this case, the snare pops out more than anything else, which is usually the case. It just eats a lot of headroom for me when I already have a lot of snare, a lot of parallel snare channels, so unless I'm using the overheads, uh, as my main stereo snare sound, I want to tame the peaks of the snare in the overhead track, not necessarily in the most transparent way. This is why I'm using L1 limiter, because it kind of tend to have that flattened sound when it actually applies limiting. And I don't know, maybe it's a sound I'm familiar with, but I find it makes the snare sound coming from the overhead sit in well with my main snare sound, without and with. You hear with the L1, the snare sounds, it, it's kind of dull. And this is exactly why I use the L1 in this case, when I want this kind of result. So it does not add snap to my main snare, which is already really snappy. So it makes it sit better, uh, almost behind, like an overhead track should be, uh, at least for my taste for this mix. And this, as a, as a byproduct, has uh, the result of making the overhead track feeling like, I don't know, it was the mics were further away or the room was slightly bigger or uh, a little more dampened. This was L1 limiter and then I have a compressor. The reason why is because I'm using this one to compress, to duck the overhead when the toms hit. So I'm picking here in the side chain the tom input and I activate the side change, so this compressor reacts to the dry tom sound and it compresses the overhead track. Why? Because I completely replaced the toms. So in the overhead, I still have the original toms. They go well together. I picked the samples according to how the original toms were, but still the style of the drummer or the drum kit, uh, for me called for a more dry, initial transient for the tom so just the close mic or at least the more prominent sound had to come from the close micing and not um, from the overhead so this is what i've done i side chained this compressor to the dry toms and with the 
You see what I mean? In this case, the the sample, the tom, the closed micing are just more up front, more up in your face. And then the overhead takeover on the tail. We are compressing about 6 dB. You can see the settings. So next one for the overhead track is Manny Marroquin EQ. Another very, very nice EQ. One of the best top end, in my opinion, and very, very smooth filters. But I'm doing quite some EQ actually here. Um, this is a color EQ, uh, it's amazing, and this is without. The main difference here is, of course, the high boost. Two moves for this EQ, the most obvious is this 4 dB cut at around at 800. It's not bad if we listen to the overhead track by itself, as usually the case when it's with, with all the kit, there was a buildup in this 800 range, and I just could use a little more high end. I really like the 25K boost on the Manny Marroquin EQ, and this is it. <laughs> Okay, it sounds more processed with this EQ, but it makes sense in the context of the kit. And because of this high boost here at 25, I used a de -er to tame the hi-hats and the cymbals. You know, I really love the old DSR from Waves. I still think it's one of the best. And very much like the L1 limiter, it's not just a clean, super clean DSR. It just rounds off the top end and the action of it has a specific character. Like I said, it's still my go-to DSR, not just for vocals, but for things like this, guitars and overheads, it's pretty great. So these are the overheads with no processing. This is with. So there's only one track left and is my drum crush. Now, usually I send to this track, Tom, kick, snare in mono, and I use my distressor to make my mono drum crush. I have a couple of videos about it. But in this case, I didn't have my distressor. This mix didn't go that way. I didn't have my distressor. I already had a lot of processing and a lot of layering for the snare. The toms were sounding pretty good as they were. So only the kick drum is going to my drum crush. I didn't have my distressor, so I had to come up with a chain that was close enough, and this is it. So only my kick drum goes here. Let me try to solo it. So gating first to reduce the length, the tail, because I'm distorting with devil lock. I don't want too much tail to get into it. And this is the devil lock. You can see the settings. It's all about this one. And then Pro EQ, pretty much a kick curve EQ you can see. Big difference. So let me play you the kick drum without that. And with. Okay, so let's play once again the whole kit. Two bus processing, three dB lower. For the whole for the whole mix bus for the whole drum bus, uh, reason is because you know the SSL actually distort saturates when you hit the red and the yellow. So I did want to do this. I did want to hit for a couple of hits. I just hit the the red, so it adds that little bit of grit. And we have let me bypass everything here. 
we have a little bit of a Q top. That's just my analyzer after it. And then the Mac DSP analog channel one. This is very subtle and in other in other songs I used it to actually compress something like this. This got a very nice action in uh, again rounding off the the top end without without making it dual. I really love this one. Totally underrated plugin, um, very subtle saturation and great dynamic control. In this case, it's used very conservatively, so the difference is not that much, but it's a difference. And actually, I want to mention the Mac DSP analog channel too. When I don't have my Neves tape emulators, this one is what I use to try to emulate that low bump that um, that the Neves give me. It's really, really nice. I think I use the Swiss, either the Swiss or one of the other algorithm. But yeah. Another very underrated plugin from Mac DSP. Kind of forgotten, and that's wrong because they are still amazing. Anyway, after the Analog Channel 1, I have the Ozone Vintage EQ. So pool textile EQ. This is very basic. It just has a low boost and a high boost. We saw it at the beginning. Just 1.3 dB on the bottom and not even at 1 dB at the top. And then lastly, we have the maximizer. In transparent uh, algorithm is doing a couple of dB just on the super tall snare hits. It's basically transparent in this way. And I think this is it for this video. This was one of the drum mixes that I've done for Heli Montin, badass drummer. You can see the video here. I'll link it down below. Go check it out so you can hear this drum mix in the context of the cover. I think this was Innocence. And she has a whole album coming out with drum covers that I mixed. It was fun for me to mix her. She's a great drummer. The result is pretty interesting. So uh, go check it out. I hope this video was useful. If you liked it, please leave a like. If you have any question about this mix, about any specific plugin or processing, leave it in the comment down below. Links to some of the plugins that we used here in the info box down below as well. Follow Mixbus TV on Instagram and Facebook. There's a lot of exclusive material in there and so many great news are coming up. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.